Who the hell actually studies dinosaurs? Paleontology is defined as the scientific study of life that existed prior to, and sometimes including, the start of the Holocene Epoch, roughly 11,700 years before present. It includes the study of fossils to classify organisms and study their interactions with each other and their environments, their paleoecology. Archaeology is defined as the study of human activity through the recovery and analysis of material culture. The archaeological record consists of artifacts, architecture, biofacts or ecofacts, sites, and cultural landscapes. Archaeology can be considered both a social science and a branch of the humanities. It is usually considered an independent academic discipline, but may also be classified as part of anthropology, history, or geography. Archaeologists study human prehistory and history, from the development of the first stone tools at Lamequi in East Africa 3.3 million years ago, up until recent decades. Paleontology lies on the border between biology and geology, but differs from archaeology in that it excludes the study of anatomically modern humans. It now uses techniques drawn from a wide range of sciences, including biochemistry, mathematics, and engineering. Use of all these techniques has enabled paleontologists to discover much of the evolutionary history of life, almost all the way back to when Earth became capable of supporting life nearly 4 billion years ago. As knowledge has increased, paleontology has developed specialized subdivisions, some of which focus on different types of fossil organisms, while others study ecology and environmental history, such as ancient climates. Archaeology is a discipline often shrouded in myth from popular culture. Characters such as Indiana Jones and movies like The Mummy tend to lead people to associate archaeology with the discovery and analysis of human remains. While human remains are undoubtedly interesting, there is a huge amount of information to be gleaned from animal bones discovered at archaeological sites. In fact, there is an entire discipline devoted to the study of these bones, zooarchaeology. This includes the study of bones, scales, shells, and even hair, basically anything that at one point belonged to an animal. Bones and shells are the most studied, generally because they preserve the best in the archaeological record. It is important to understand the differences between zooarchaeology and paleontology. Often thanks to popular culture, the two different disciplines are easily confused. Both study animals of the past. However, the difference lies in the fact that archaeologists study animal remains as a function of their relationships to a human past. Paleontologists study bones as a function of their relationship to the history of life on Earth as a whole, not just human. Even without dinosaur bones, there is plenty of variety to be uncovered at archaeological sites. The bones of animals are often recovered in large quantities. Animal bones found at archaeological sites could belong to domesticated herds, they could belong to pets, or wild animals hunted for food, or they could belong to pests such as rats and mice. So why does it matter? We don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you something. <laughs> we don't care. Jeremy. Why should we bother to separate out what type of animal each tiny piece of bone belonged to? Studying animal bones provides knowledge about how people might have interacted with animals in the past. We have learned through bones, such as these, about what animal previous humans farmed, which they kept as pets and even which they chose to worship and or sacrifice for religious purposes. Also, from studying these bones, archaeologists can find indicators about the tools used in the past. Cut marks on the bones can provide hints to the tools used to kill and butcher animals that did not die a natural death. There are even some times when paleontology overlaps with zooarchaeology, like in the instance of mammoth kill sites or in the case of the deaths of the now extinct crocodiles on Yusukis. Check out my video on them to learn more. The bones of small mammals, such as rodents, or the bones of small birds, can even provide clues to the environment surrounding the exploratory site. While there is no denying that the discovery of human skeletons tends to excite public interest, in many ways the tiniest rodent bone can provide just as much, if not more information about the way those studied lived. Our relationship to animals and our manipulation of the environment has remained an important force throughout human history.
In the end, archaeologists generally have nothing to do with dinosaurs. I am sure that if an archaeologist came across a dinosaur fossil when they were in search of artifacts, they would hand the discovery over to paleontologists. Paleontologists are people educated to handle and analyze dinosaur fossils, and archaeologists are not. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Elephant Tier patrons Abby Smith, Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Cherry Shaw, Chris Frampton, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Ed Peretz, Isaiah Garza, Jax the Hacks, Natty Cat, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, and Extraterrestrial. As well as my top S tier Tyrannosaurus patrons Admin, Antron, Aphid Kirby, Cyber, Dana Manchester, Danny Van Heck, Henry Brennan, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Joshua Mana, Panic, Radio 404, Robert Kessler, Ruben Zachariah, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, and The Dogman.